this is Alex from Tom's Hardware and I'm talking to Sebastian Marino from BlackBerry. Uh, what do you, to you do you at BlackBerry? Um, I'm the Senior Vice President for BlackBerry OS. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, BB10 and maybe right. get a little bit into the weeds if possible. Sure. Um, can we sort of maybe just go back in time a little bit to um, Cunix and, and the playbook and you know the gestation of some of the ideas that you've incorporated into BB10 and how they developed over the past few years? Yeah, sure. That's a really good question. So uh, I think if you go back a couple of years, you know, Cunix, and this is, I came up through Cunix. Uh, I was responsible for engineering there, and uh, I think if you look at it, QNX had uh, well has a rich operating system, embedded operating system that we had in automotive, medical, a number of other areas, and we took that as a foundation for BlackBerry 10. But along the way to BlackBerry 10, we did do the playbook, which was really the first, which which really built the foundation for what became BlackBerry 10. So it was QNX Automotive, we did playbook, um, and then on top of that, we built. Uh, BlackBerry 10. A lot of the technologies that you see in BlackBerry 10, some came from Cunix, some came from other acquisitions. We talk about Torch, TAT, a number of other companies that uh, and technologies that were acquired. Or, sorry, BlackBerry acquired. We all have to reprogram ourselves today. Um, and then there's a lot of great technologies that came from within, uh, within RIM, within BlackBerry, that we uh, we really baked into that, uh, into that platform. Because I know that the, the concept of the gestures and, and swiping in from the edge of the screen was something that was pioneered on the playbook. Correct. But you really have taken it into the next level with BB10. Correct. And actually, a lot of thought has gone into you know the gestures and the navigation uh, user experience in uh, BlackBerry 10, and also how to marry the traditional BlackBerry DNA with the reimagined experience. So it's familiar to BlackBerry users, and yet it's actually very innovative and new. Now, if we look at some of the competition, talk about Microsoft, Windows Phone 8, and even Windows 8. In the marketplace, there has been a little bit of resistance from users, because when I think something is new, when something changes you know, existing ways of doing things, uh, so we're, let's talk about existing BlackBerry users, is there not a risk of when you introduce something so different, even maybe revolutionary, that there is going to be some pushback in some people who just don't want to get it, don't want to say, no, I just don't want these stupid gestures. So, and on that slide, same topic, is the Q10 gonna have some kind of keyboard shortcuts for those diehards who just don't want to touch Correct. that screen? So I, th I think I would say, in terms of a, of a full-touch device, the user interface that we've built, and the, the interaction paradigm, I think is, is unique, but at the same time, it is one that people pick up really quickly. And so, honestly, within BlackBerry, uh, you know, they're all, we're all diehard BlackBerry users, and we've migrated to BlackBerry 10. And in fact, um, it, is a different, uh, it is a different paradigm, but people learn it quickly, and actually it's very, very powerful. So the things that you can do with it that you cannot do with other, you know, other phones are really uh, what make it so productive. So, um, now your question around the Q10, yes, the Q10 will have you know, keyboard shortcuts, uh, but it is also a full touch experience, so you're going to have a... So it's, it's for, for you, people on training wheels moving from their bowl, they can use the keyboard shortcuts until they finally say, oh, I should just touch the screen once. And hopefully they might want to touch the screen more. Correct. <laughs> so. But if, if, you, if you actually go on a Z10 and you try the keyboard, it's actually quite astonishing. I don't know if you've tried yours yet, but it's actually incredibly easy to use. Well, and, we were talking and, before about and I'm how converted. I was a keyboard person, and I'm converted. It learn. It has algorithms to learn finger placement and Correct. does it adjust the area that you touch for particular keys depending right. on the size of your fingers. Your fingers, and it learns your basically your typing patterns. Um, as you make mistakes and correct, it learns from that. So that next time, if you touch you're slightly off center from a key, it learns that and still types the right word. So, as somebody, as, as a software guy who was worked obviously on the keyboards, would, could you claim that eventually, if you use the, the, the software keyboard enough, it's going to be better than a hardware keyboard? I actually, that... I find it because of the prediction. The thing that it has is it not only has the you know looking at where your fingers land on the on the screen, it also does prediction, word prediction that is very, very, uh, actually very powerful. And you should try it. Um, so actually you can type or you can even type incomplete words and swipe as it predicts that word. You don't have to type the full word. And you can actually type, I find myself more productive on it than a physical keyboard, even though I've been a physical keyboard user for like a decade. Now, you guys have bundled in quite a few first-party applications. Um, there's a, the, the, the story, story Maker, right? That is our own application, so, yeah, yes. The story Maker, there's the, the photo editing, there's, um, the, the camera application is pretty powerful. Um, why did you decide to, to build all these applications? 
into the OS rather than rely on third parties to, to, to bring those applications? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think it was, uh, you know, in part we want a very powerful experience out of the box. And the other thing that we wanted was really integration. So, you know, the Z10 has great camera, capture content, we can edit it. We have a share framework within it that basically allows you to connect content sources and content destinations. So I can have a YouTube uploader, a photo uploader, so I can connect the content that I create on the device, I edit, and then immediately push it up to my favorite social site. And it requires you to have those applications natively to give you the full power and full end end experience. And for third party developers. And, and you saw the video, oh. so the thing that's, that's yeah. interesting, you saw, you saw the movie that we created on stage during yeah. the keynote, right? That was a real movie that was created right there on the spot. And you see, you saw how easy it was. So obviously under the hood, there's enough power to power that. And the operating system itself is efficient enough that it, it, it seems to be very, very smooth. Correct. And it, there's no lag anywhere, there's no delay or anything like that. I mean, so you saw the video playing. Yeah. And at the same time, you could swipe and uh, you, know, you could basically uh, peek into your hub as the video kept playing. So you basically have hub, your entire core user experience, and a video playing at the same time, and it's completely smooth. Now, talking about Hub, we were mentioning before that there are a number of built-in, um, you know, uh, social media uh, feeds. So you know, right. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, how easy is it for um, other uh, social media platforms to plug themselves into BB10? So let's say Google says we want to bring Google Plus to BB10. Is it something fairly open that is easy? Yeah, for so I, I think that? you saw some of the apps that were that we announced today as third-party apps. Uh, there is a model by which they can plug into Hub. And it is, uh, you know, it's fairly straightforward. Now, obviously, it is part of the core experience, so it's probably more complex than creating a simple app. Uh, but it is a capability. That's and you are working with some people already to hopefully bring some of those additional. Correct. Yes. I mean, obviously, you have, the, the, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are the, you know, the three main ones, obviously. Right. right. But you know, new things happen every day. I mean, Vine just came out, and obviously, it's not available for anybody, anything else but iOS, but. Vine on BB10 will be nice in the future. So, <laughs> so working on a number of them, you know. The... Um, it wasn't mapping wasn't talked about very much. Um, can you talk about who, who's providing mapping map, map data for the? the, the uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if we have disclosed that or not. Aha. Okay. So it has not been disclosed yet. Or it might have been, and I may not be aware of whether we've disclosed it. I obviously know. But... Now, you can't speak of specifics, obviously. This is version one. It obviously has a lot of features. It looks amazing. It has, all the gestures look very unique. Is there already a roadmap for future development and, and improvements or additions to, to the platform? Absolutely. No comments on anything? No well, so I can, I can tell you that, uh, so as a platform guy, I can tell you building the first iteration of the platform is probably the hardest step. But once you get it built, you actually get a lot of velocity in building new applications, new capabilities on top of it, and we have a, a very rich roadmap. And Torsten talked about, you know, this is the beginning. It's not, it's not the end of the road for Library 10, it's really the beginning of the new era. And uh, we have... Because I'm assuming there would have to be, maybe for future curves, maybe a, a more light version of the OS for lower power hardware, maybe? I don't know, I'm just speculating here. I think that you can think of it as going across a, you know, a number of different axes. And uh, you know, obviously, we've talked about the opportunities with BlackBerry 10 in other markets. You see that with uh, automotive. I don't know if you saw the, the current CES. The Bentley. The, the it was, Bentley. It was Bentley, yes. Right. And that really is running a different version of the same platform for automotive that we bring to the market with the automakers. So in some ways, it's, it's effectively a lot of the same pieces of BlackBerry 10 are effectively running the same platform. Now, there's going to be playbook users out there, and the the burning question on their mind, and me probably going to answer this is, when is BB10 coming out for the playbook? So I think the the answer, the standard answer that we've given is, um, I don't know what you said actually, is, uh, but it, it will it will be supported. It's right. not playbook right. is end of life. You're not right. forgetting about the playbook, right? right? Because I mean, I think this is going to be a great tablet OS as yes, well. It is. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Great. And it was well, a great you. talking thank to you, a great event, and a great OS. And good luck with the launch. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much.